tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com. Hi, coming in hot today, James. Coming in real hot. A lot of rats out in these streets. A lot of fucking rats out in these streets, James. I don't. I don't trust no one. What are you talking? about? I don't about? trust anybody anymore. Too many rats in these streets. First, you got uh, Michael Cohen. Mm. He's uh, he's testifying live yeah. right now as we speak. Just snitching, dude. Just... Straight snitching. Yeah. What's your tell the audience your theory on snitches? My theory or your stance, if you will. They get stitches. Yeah. Obviously, everyone yeah, knows that. <laughs> or they end up in ditches. Yeah. Right. One or the other. Either or. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to this little fuck. This guy. This slimy little fuck. Yeah. I mean, I'm torn on, on people like this. Because I, I, he was Trump's fixer for what, yeah. 10 years as a lawyer, right? I believe that everybody needs a fixer. The world's a fucking dirty place. And you have these fucking lawyers out there who, Unless you're fighting, for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tread lightly here. Unless you're fighting for some type of justice for something, you know, mm-hmm. uh, either someone gets killed or hurt or uh, you, you get wronged, you know, mm-hmm. at work, at the workplace or whatever. I, I believe that lawyers need to be there. There's other instances where people are just suing just to sue. Yeah. And those lawyers are shitbags. Oh, yeah. It's a weird profession to me to really stand up for. You know, I make a lot of stances on this show for teachers and doctors, sure, firefighters, uh, policemen, you know, a lot of people who I, I feel personally change the world. Yeah. Um, this is a profession that doesn't, it doesn't really change the world. I mean, yeah. you need contracts for all of this shit because people are dirtbags, and that's fine. Um, and so that, like, yeah, I guess, I guess I understand the other element to it. Like, uh, we've got some friends of ours who are going through a divorce, right? And one of those is just like, hey, I, I don't really give a fuck. The other person can have everything. Right. I just want to end this. But the states don't want you to end this. The lawyers don't want, don't want you, you to end, end this. It. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute. No, like, we, this is big business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. just get out of this easy. Yeah. And so a, a, a good buddy of mine's going through it now, and uh-huh. he's just like, this is a fucking nightmare. Him and the wife have agreed to everything. Of like, hey, right. keep the properties. I just get one of the cars. You're going to have the kids, and that's it. Right. And they're like, no, 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 no. You've got to be, some states, it's like you've got to be separated for a year. Mm-hmm. I think North Carolina is one of them. Uh, I think it's six months. Uh, yeah, I si- haven't looked into it. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> no. Who told me that? Jared did. He's like, you know, in North Carolina, you have to be separated for six months and you have to go to counseling. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a cooling off period in uh, uh, California, I believe. Like that whole shit. I, to me, I don't know that that's designed to help the couples. It seems to me to be designed to help the lawyers and then the state to pay these taxes for. You know, judges, all that other, all these other fees, all these other stupid fucking fees. So with this profession, it's really hard to get behind. So, you know, even though this guy worked for Trump or whatever, they need you to get behind him. But yeah, well, no, like, but here's what I'm going to, here's my point. What I'm getting to today, like today Mm -hmm. for this guy, because of what he does, it is hard to get behind this guy or care for somebody like me. Yeah. Now, I can see politically why you would care about today, about watching this live on television. Yeah. Because if you're on the left, yeah, Trump fucking colluded. Let's this find is, it all out. He's a fixer. Well, I mean, tr- truthfully, the only things you're probably going to find, find out today are uh, he paid some hush money to some prostitutes, you know, back in the day. Right. 
back in like what 2005 or Stormy Daniels or whatever the fuck it is, right? Eh, I don't really give a shit about that. Uh, the WikiLeaks thing about uh, they're trying to find dirt on the opponent. I don't care about that either because I'm both sides do that. And truthfully, I think it's just tactically smart. Given today's current political climate, you need all the ammo you can get. That's not really surprising to me either. So what do I really care about this guy in today? Like, you know, he's a rat. He's kind of a dirt bag. He's trying to save some, himself some prison time, I guess. But he's a lawyer. And it's like, man, I feel hard. Like, I, I don't. I don't feel, I just don't feel, feel as bad for this guy. Like you shouldn't, I know, but there is people out there who do remarkably like that. uh, People care and you know, he's going to cry or whatever the fuck it is today. And it's, you know, it's like, eh, he's a lawyer. I can't, I just don't care. He he taped Trump, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Client, you know, he, he, he knew what he was doing. He knows what he's doing now. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, no. to, to, but, but to put this in perspective, we did a story about, um, I believe it was a, a, a firefighter who did that gender reveal and burned down those, an- those yeah. acres. And it was, you know, the guy was a first responder and I was just like, now that, like, I, f- I feel terrible for it, where it was just like, totally, man. And again, I think it's the profession of like what it is, um, what you do for a living. And like, for, as a lawyer, I don't give a baker's fuck. About lawyers. No. Um, Again, nor, n- nor should you. Yeah. I, that's, that's my opinion. Unless, you know, you're working for the state. You're going That's in, what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're going into the, you know, public defender's office. Pro bono. Day, trying to free the, the West, West Memphis and Three or something. And you actually care. Yeah. Like, um, and you're not just sort of. Yeah. You're, if you're an Aaron Brockovich or something. You're like, sure. all right, cool. The rest of it, eh, I don't really give a shit. Yeah. So this this whole thing that's going on today, it's hard for me to get amped about it where I'm like, eh, I just don't, I don't care. I don't really care. Now, the other one I care about, the other rat that I care about is uh, Takashi 69 That is just oh, right. unbelievably fascinating to me. I got a text uh, late last night that just said he's cutting a deal with the prosecution because he's up for uh, the, the rapper Takashi 69 for the audience if you don't know who that is. Just Google him. He's got a giant 6'9 tattooed on half of his face as soon and as a you'll spider web tattooed him, on the other half of his face. You'll go, oh. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. That guy. Rainbow colored hair. It's that guy. You've seen him before. He. People make memes of his face, put other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have for forever. And, um, and it's funny. Uh, we, we got. We, we, so to be fair, we did like after I talked about this last time, some people sent me in a bunch of Takashi Six Nines music, and they were like, "Yo, I think you really like this guy. He's actually a pretty fucking dope rapper, and he puts on like crazy amazing live shows." I dug into his catalog. He's pretty goddamn good. Okay, and he could have had probably a future, maybe still can with the deal that he's cutting, and that's what I wanted to chat about. So his whole shit was. I'm fucking gangster. I'm fucking hood from the street. Joins up with a gang. I forget which one it was, but it was something fucking hardcore. It wasn't sure. It wasn't like the, you know, the Justino fucking five or anything, you know, right. With you and like it four house moms. You know? Right. It wasn't like the gang from Greece. No, no, it wasn't. That. It wasn't John Travolta's gang. No, no, yeah. it wasn't his gang from Greece. Ooh, uh, yeah. Yep. Definitely was not. Yeah. Their gang. Tell me more. Tell me more. But by joining this gang, it added to his music and the shit that he was rapping about and blah, sure. blah, 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 blah. Kind of gave him street it's a cred. PR gang. Exactly. They should have those. I, yeah, I know. I, they might, actually. It might have been. Um, so he joins up, d- does a bunch of fucked up shit. Rumor is he fucking had some people shot at. Didn't get killed. He was looking at, he's looking at 45 years in, in jail time. Magically, he starts snitching. All of a sudden, you start to hear rumors of like, ah, oh, he's probably down to like 12 years, probably down to like 10. And then I get a text from a buddy of mine who's like, hey, man, he's, he's outing everybody. He's ratting everybody out, and he might not get anything. And instead, by ratting out everybody in this gang and what really goes down, that he's going to get a witness protection program. First of all, they're going to have to shave his head, which is fine. Uh, to get rid of the rainbow. Laser off all the tattoos. How do you laser off face tattoos, I guess? 
Again, you're going to have to get into some face-off shit with Travolta and right. Nick Cage. Right. Some grass. And put a new face on. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other thing that is really fascinating about this is when you have a guy that that's public who makes music like that, how do you walk away forever that young? Because he's a young guy. Yeah, you can't. Like, he's I in think... his early 20s. You can enter the witness protection program and all that shit. I don't know the rules of what happens once you're in. If they say, hey, man... We can protect you, but if you say X or do X or come out publicly, you know, about something, we can't help you anymore. Or do you go back to do you go back to jail for that? Or I, what, are the, what are the rules behind that? I don't I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you violate the witness protection program takes care of you for a certain amount of years. If you violate it all, they cut everything off. Okay. Do they do they pay you I'm to not be sure in it? If you go back, you get for a certain amount of years to like get on your feet or whatever. Uh huh. You're given everything you need, and I think a little bit of a salary, house, um, social security, like all of these things. Okay. Um, they set you up. All right. Essentially, and set you up to. Uh, I it's a, a couple years, maybe. I'm going to have to look on that, but it's a certain amount of time to get on your feet. I wish you had something to look on that. That would be a bigger yeah, thing to like go a, a through nice, the logistics. I wish you had a computer or something to use, like a Google or, Google or something. Do you want me to go through the logistics of the no, witness no, no, protection no, 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 program no, no, right now? But anyways, what I do know of it is that so they like fully set you up for a while and then it gets taken away. You have to get on your feet in some way. Okay. It's not forever. Okay. Um. But, I mean, someone else can tell you that better. Yeah, I, mean, I was trying to think about it when I heard this last night. And I was like, man, is there anybody that famous, that, that famous, that, that I know that came out of it? And I can think of one. That came out of witness protection? Yeah, um, it was Sammy the Bull Gravano. Okay. Uh, he, I, I don't know if he got outed or he outed himself like he was in Arizona for years and years and years. Right. Um, but he was the guy, I guess, that took down Gotti. But then once Gotti is taken died, down well, he died. died. Yeah, he died. Are so you... I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that Depends works. Depends on, yeah. But I, I remember him being very public after that. And it was just like, all right, cool. So then what happens with your life? How do you move on or do X? Yeah. The other thing is Takashi 69 was making a lot of fucking money. I'm sure whatever stipend the government gives you. Yeah. Probably isn't going to be enough for a guy like that. Oh, no. You have to live a bare bones life. Yeah. Kind of looking at it right now. But I, you have to be bare bones. You're, you're going back into like working class. And if you want to somehow, without getting caught and legally, make good money, that's up to you. They're not going to help you with that. Boy, I, I, I just, I don't, th I don't think he'll be able to do it. I if really don't. If they don't aggressively seek employment, the payments get terminated. So okay. Have, you have to be really, it's an assistance program for a certain amount of years, but if you aren't trying to get your life together right. and turn into this person that they've, I mean, new name, everything. Right. If you aren't trying to turn into that person, they will take it all away. All right. Okay. So here's, the, here's now where this gets really fascinating. Okay. So if you're, if you're looking for employment, right. what does he do for a living? He raps. That is, that is a job that, that pays him a lot of money, right? Would he be able to record in a studio on his own, release music on his own, or do features with other artists? Let's say you set up you know, some form of email or accounts where, I, I, wanna say, I don't know if it was Kanye who worked with him last, or uh, no, Kanye was the other guy who's fucking up for murder right now. Um, Fuck, he was just on somebody huge's album. Uh, I want to say 21 Savage or... Um, no, A Boogie with a Hoodie. That was it. Um, number one album in the country. Takashi 6 ix last album was number one in the country, right? Let's say one of these guys calls you to feature. Like Kanye, Lil Wayne, whatever. Yes. Can they say, hey, I, like, uh, go through a lawyer. Do, do it very Bill Murray style, right? Where you just have a lawyer, that's it. You have a hotline, a 1-800 number set up like Bill Murray. And you say, hey, man, 
where can I send this track? Can you rap on it and just do that? And the you reason why not... the, the reason why I think this, by the way, is right. I, one of my buddies is one of the biggest voiceover artists in the world. Right. He enjoys traveling more than I mean. He's super famous in the voiceover world. Like we we're just like holy shit. He loves 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 to travel. Okay. He he carries one of these mics with him in a bag and a computer like a everywhere something. he goes in the world because he's just reading lines off a computer. He can literally be anywhere in the world and just record his lines for all these cartoons and all this other shit. And it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to go in anymore. Right. How could you do this with rap? You, uh, the most important rule in, in the witness protection is to not make contact with former associates or unprotected family members. And they must not return to the town which they are relocated from. Okay, so let's say you get a, so, a lawyer in New York and you're relocated somewhere else. Everything goes through that lawyer. Could you still make albums and do features on shit? I mean, you wouldn't be able to tour, obviously, which is a big yeah. portion of your money. But, I mean, theoretically, you'd be able to do t-shirt sales, albums. And look, after a certain amount of time, once you're assimilated, you only have to make contact with the government once a year. And then after that, it's like at their request. So if he does this for a couple years, gets assimilated, Uh then he doesn't really have to follow those rules. It would be at his own risk at that point. So So, look, so that's a great. Basically just laying low, doing what they say for a couple of years. And then you kind of, they drop off, you drop off and whatever happens to you after that. Ah. is kind of at your own risk. And anyone that's followed all these rules within these years has never been killed. Okay, so... In the witness protection program. For for, for the prosecution, this is a great deal. If you're trying to take down one of the biggest gangs in New York, what do you give a shit about this paper gangster who is clearly just doing it for the music? He doesn't really live that life. Yeah, unless... So so if he's going to flip and Mm -hmm. and name names and, and you can take down everybody, great. Absolutely. The prosecution... Absolutely do that. If you're him, how are you going to get assimilated into society? What, what is he going to get his face tattoos removed? You know how long that takes? And how do many you, sessions? Does he have money? Yes. So he can... Well, I don't know, actually. After these lawyers. Okay. So basically, it's all at his own risk, basically. Okay. So if he wants to lay low somewhere and Postmates everything... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Get his own bodyguard, something like this. He can do this in this in Arizona or wherever he wants to. It's up to him. So if he's at, but he, if he's asking for witness protection from the government, then he has to do all those things. Um, I wonder if he's just asking for it to get out of jail time, and then he's gonna kind of lay low and do his own maybe witness protection. Maybe. Right? Yeah, I would worry. Because I would worry about being to, killed, though. I the mean, the way that fuck. they do it again, you know, when the government does something, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be nice. It's not gonna be a lot. It's not gonna be pretty. No, not at all. You're gonna be living in a shithole yeah, yeah, suburb, yeah, 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 yeah. working at a Best Buy, something like this. So there's no way Takashi Six Nine to- walks into a Best Buy and they're like, ah, oh, we don't know who that is. Right. So I. The terms of the witness protection, I'm sure, (laughs) might be a little bit different for this guy. Or because they're not paying for the laser and all of that, too. So that's really up to him. And Yeah. Fuck. It's wild to think about, isn't it? I would go to Europe if I were him, but yeah. Or I guess an island somewhere. But even then, you'd, you'd be worried about getting outed, you know? But who's coming out to the island to kill you? That's what I'm saying. You would are have to go to an that island. Powerful, or are they just like? I don't know. We'll see. Who are the people that he's taking down? I, I mean, it's gang yeah. members. You know, like fuck. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, who knows? I'm not willing to take that risk. <laughs> right. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Fuck. I'm not even going to continue talking about it. I'm going to get to the sponsors, James. Give me that number. Risk this shit. We're a, we're a high profile show. 1.6 million listeners. I'm not risking that shit, Jabes. And then after the sponsors, I just want to talk real quick about the female football player that received. received oh, the- yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to talk about that and uh, also the wrestler as well. Uh, we'll get into. It's a little bit and different. And the track. But yeah. No, I, but, but all of it combined kind of feeds into one another. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, though, we got BlackRifleCoffee.com. 
chief sponsor, BRCC. Big fan. Big, big fan. You got you to gotta sign up for the, the Coffee Club of the Month program. It's the only way. It's the only way these days. The only way to fly. You got a dope-ass tank top on. Yeah, they're doing this like... I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I love their new kind of mountain, mountainous. Yeah. Look. Camp look, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. camping in the woods, cowboy well, coffee look. I'm yeah, into it's it. nice. It's nice. And they got it's very t- bison union a little bit. Yeah. Well, they, they work a lot together. What's uh, l- let me ask you this, Jabes. Uh, how do those how do those tees fit for ladies? Are they good? Tank tops? They're good. Nice. Because yeah. there's a lot you don't like. I don't like uh, a tummy hugging. No, uh, does. no nobody, nobody does. Nobody does, right? Yeah. Loose at the top, hugging at the tummy. Yeah. But again, that's not their fault. That's my fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just made it like a normal tank top. <laughs> I'm the one with the problem. I, I, I like the Black Rifle uh, tanks. I like this shit Me for too. ladies. Uh, they're great. Um, but by the way, you know why they're going for that look, I think? Um, they've got a new coffee out, which we'll talk about. It's... Uh, those packets, what do you call those? Oh, yeah, the coffee on the go thing, the instant coffee. There it is, instant coffees. So not only do they have uh, bags of, of beans. Beans, 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 beans. They've also got K-Cups, and then now they have these instant coffees to go, which are big. Uh, we had those uh, shit, man. Those came in handy at those, those cold tailgates we, we were hosting. I one oh, in Philadelphia yeah. we were drinking that shit. So, uh, look, they got everything there. Uh, promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use it on the Coffee Club of the Month program. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. What happened? It got stuck? It got stuck. Sometimes <laughs> it gets stuck. Sometimes it gets stuck in there. You knew it gets stuck sometimes. Too much? Uh, that's Carry weird. on. Are we taking it too far? Strike Force Energy is look. It's the jam these days. It's the jam. This is. I, I feel like this is the time when they're really starting to take over. Everybody's buying this shit in like Seven Elevens, and they're like, "Yo, man, I thought this was just on your show." And I'm like, "No, it's no, like dude. A real... It's like a worldwide thing now." Yeah. Um, and they're in a bunch of military bases, and everybody's hitting me up, and they're like, "Hey, this is like on the counters or whatever." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, dude. It, it's not like some just made a product on the on the show." It is, it is replacing Monster and Red Bull and all of that shit. I mean, dude, this, uh, look, I had some yesterday, I got some today. This is just a fucking tin pouch. If you're watching the video show, um, subscribe on YouTube, please. We're making a fucking big push in a video this year. I know I keep saying that, but I love it. Um, look, it's just a fucking little pouch. You just carry it with you and squeeze it and put it in anything. And boom, you're energized. Uh, it's better than drinking Red Bull and shit. You yeah, know? or coffee all day. Really? Yeah. I, look, I, I, it is better than that. It's better for you. So, and it lasts longer than five hour energy. They got four amazing flavors lemon, original, orange, and make America grape again. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They also have a subscription of the month. I, we just get a 40 pack once a month. So it's easy. It's fucking easy, man. Uh, big fan of those guys. Next up. We've got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I think we're gonna do a we're gonna have a Mother's Day giveaway. Um for should. some sheets and some some pillows there. I gotta I gotta call Rich, man. Fuck. I forgot to do that. Um love that dude. Uh love ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh Ashley over there, they're all fucking great. Um but here's why they're great. They're always trying to come up with new deals for the show and for the listeners. That that fifteen percent off is a banger, dude. If you're military or first responder, you get an extra fifteen percent off. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Obviously, we do this on both shows that I host. Go to the bottom of the page of that footer and uh, just click it on. You get an extra fifteen percent off if you're a military or first responder. Mattresses are a big ticket item. I get it. They also have a, a pay as you go program. Thirty six months, no interest. Nobody's offering that. Um, boom, you can pay as you go. It's amazing. Their pillows, their adjustable bases, all that shit. Uh, their bundle package is still doing that, seven ninety nine. But you can only get one. Everybody who bought it loved it and was just like, "I'm going to go back and get two. And they're like, "Eh, we're not that cool." Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Don't take advantage. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros and take advantage of their deals today. Uh, last but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut, smooth.
Mm-hmm. You uh, <laughs> don't no. talk in my backswing. I don't want people to turn off the show they who are won't. listening in their car. They won't turn it off. If they're they watching, wouldn't dare the video on YouTube. Then they then they, they they'll they're fine with an eighteen second pause. Fine if you're in the then. car, fine then. <laughs> you guys didn't turn off. Ross is an idiot. <laughs> You're right. Oh, God, you did it extra loud. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what happens when you talk in my space. By the way, I want to give a shout out to uh, Gordon Wagner again on the on, on our YouTube channel for Ross Patterson he Revolution. Twice? He did. He goes, "What is it? What is it? My birthday?" Oh my! Because <laughs> you said what it. Is I think it you my said it birthday? twice. I did. Said in the beginning for the Robert Kraft. Yeah, yeah. Had to. Had to. Had, Had to. to free Robert Kraft. He's okay. Um, he's in. He's okay. Yeah. You know, I don't. He's. He may not be a good guy. He may not. Who may not. cares? Look at straightrazors.com, uh, Takashi69. They're not giving that guy any of those in prison. I can tell you that. Uh, but maybe on the way out, he can fucking cut his face tattoos off of it. They got everything. Uh, a lot of, a lot of drinking bros yesterday were asking me, like, hey, what's the best, like, company for beard oil and mustache wax and all that shit? It's Straight Razors. Um, that's, they have Smolder now. As uh, their beard oil, and uh, that's my that's my fucking jam is their aftershave. It is the best aftershave on the planet. Their razors are second to none. If you're worried about using a straight razor, don't. They get a safety razor. Um, the blades are just different, man. It takes about a day and a half off of your weekly shaving activities. And uh, they got kits, man, for for gifts. Uh, there's there's you know Father's Day and all that other shit's coming up. Hey, we're we're in March for Christ's sakes. You believe that shit? Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. That's always good. And that's a big savings there. And then, of course, buy my books. Uh, At night she cries while he rides his steed. When darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. They're also available on Audible. The audiobooks blow blow the fuck up, by the way. Man, we can't put those things out fast enough. Six and a half hours a piece. They're all actors. We got an Oscar winner in one. You and I, you're in all of them as well. Um Shit, man. Everybody's asking for that third one. I can, I can, I can say this. I'm writing it. It is on the way. And uh, as the sun rises, it dawns on him. That's the, that's the, the third one, and it is in the works now. Um, getting, getting, I'm getting enough into it that I feel like it's a, it's a real book. Should you say how you're writing it? How, how, what do you mean how I'm writing it? In between being on hold oh yeah yeah yeah. so and just that a lot of that energy which i think people can really relate to it i think is gonna be more present in this book no yeah so th- there's th- th- this is gonna be a darker one because he, he his life can't be all sunshine and kitten dicks obviously because so no one's is it's a darker one so like i've like I- i'm on hold half the day with banks or whatever trying to set up accounts or you know there's a lot actually surprisingly goes into the business end of the the podcast um so you're you're constantly dealing with with shit all the time and it's just like all right cool while i'm on hold with these places you know trying to link accounts or whatever like bank of america was a great one yesterday as a bank they've been fine sure their customer service is goddamn horrific and it's an hour and 20 minutes out of my life Mm. every time without fail for something super simple where it's just like, they hey, tell you it's going to be an hour, but you go, really? It is. And it always is. So it always is the exact time they tell you, which is always strange. Yeah. And uh, so I put the phone down on speaker next to the computer and then I write and I use that anger. I channel ch- ch- that, channel song, that anger. And then the, the moment where they like the recording comes back on. Yep. And you if think you'd it's like it and you think it's hot. <laughs> so it's like, oh, uh, uh, you, your your on hold situation gets interrupted. Yeah, so this is going to be a, a dark one because um, he, he, there's a lot of people that that uh, I hate in this life currently, and um, I'm using it in this one. So That's I'm excited great. about that. That's great. Book's going to be well. It's already coming along, man. I'm I want to say three or four chapters in. It's dope as fuck. Um, so I'm super super stoked about it. And uh, release date wise. We're still waiting on Matt's. Yeah. I think it's, I think Matt's is going to come out 4th of July. I, mean, I don't have confirmation of that yet. Um, and if it does, then we'll probably release this, uh, I would say spring. 
Um, I, I, I was going to say go ambitiously of like winter or spring somewhere in there, but I, I think th- there's some other actors I'd like to try to get for the, the, the audio book. So I, I'd like to say spring um, for this one, for the, for the next one, which is great. I think that's enough time in between of like, all right, great to get Matt's out and promote it and all that shit. Uh, Matt best book, by the way. Um, so we'll see. We'll see, but I still need a fucking answer from those guys. You wanted to talk about the female football player. I guess briefly, I mean, what what more can I say that I haven't already said about this bullshit? But anyway, this uh, this girl, Tony Harris, yeah. became the first female football player at a skilled position to sign to get a scholarship, basically. Sure. Um, linebacker. It wasn't Kathy Ireland from uh, that movie, huh? Where she was the kicker. Oh. Fuck. All right. Ah, yeah. I, look, I guess if it wasn't her, then it wasn't her. You know, what am I going to do? It wasn't. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I, what do I say? You wanted to talk about it. What, what, what do you want to say about it? How do you feel? Because I, I haven't I, already said, which is like, that's such bullshit. Yeah. I what mean, are look, you doing? You're, you're taking away, uh, t- in my opinion. What are you doing? You're taking away a scholarship from somebody else. I mean, there I, is no way that you're from better. From a dude. There is no way than you, that you're better than a guy. Yeah. Not one. She is not, she's maybe 160, 150 pounds. Yeah. I, I don't even, that's, you're going to fucking crush generous, some. Generous to me. That she's less than that? I think she's less than that. I mean, I, I just, be, I saw yeah. her interview and she could be. I, I, there's so many things that went through my, my mind with this of like, man, I, if you were, if you, if you play against real dudes, you're going to get fucking trucked. I, I mean, especially or you won't get trucked because they won't fucking truck you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and then that's fucking bullshit too. Yeah. So it's almost uh, like the female ref too out there. So to, to, you don't to, have to worry about to flip it. There was um, uh, a wrestler uh, who was in the state championship, and um, he declined the, uh, to, to, to wrestle this female wrestler right, in high school. And he said, look, he was very respectful about it. Um, he said, I don't want to wrestle her because of, of how aggressive men are on the mat against other men and where you're grabbing other men and all that stuff. Just don't I don't feel, feel comfortable, comfortable doing, it. doing it. No disrespect to her. I'm sure she's worked hard and... You know, all of that stuff. I, but I wouldn't treat a, a lady like that on the mat or off the mat. Mm-hmm. And for a 17-year-old kid to say that was pretty respectful. For, for me, to put a 17-year-old male kid in that, in situation, that situation is fucked. Because now you're costing him a medal or a chance to, to medal at state. Because some girl wants to wrestle to prove what? Like, what are you, what are you proving? Either, either change it. And have female wrestlers and have a female wrestling program yes. like, like they're doing in hockey right now. Yeah. Um, but don't make men and women wrestle against each other, uh, especially and- in today's era. Like all you give a shit about the, is the Me Too and everything else. Like, dude, I just really watch a male wrestling match. I mean, you're checking oil out there. You've, there's some fingers and butts. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. Go, go so Google checking oil and uh, wrestling and, and just... I peruse the pictures of what, what happens. Right. Um, imagine if that happened. Let's say it was an accident. Total accident. Your thumb went up a girl's asshole as you're wrestling her in a wrestling match. Sure. The <laughs> outrage right. that would ensue from something like that mm-hmm. would be monumental. You would never hear the end of it. That picture would go viral forever of. Yeah. Right. I mean. I just, I hate that kids are in this position and to to take this even further, uh, there's the two track stars in, uh, what was it? Either Connecticut or Delaware. The, 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 the ones that came one and two in the 50 yard dash were trans. They hadn't transitioned. They were, uh, boys who had switched to girls track right in field. They smoked these fucking girls. They had, wi- no they had wigs on, and that was it. <laughs> Dead serious. I think they had their hair grown out, but yeah. 
<laughs> they had wigs on. I, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like Juana Man out there where you were just like, are we, and we're not even attempting to fool anybody. We're just throwing wigs on. And yeah. the year earlier, they were in boys track and field. Did, they couldn't win. They switch. They go over to girls track and field. Right. And I mean, it was, if you watch the footage of it's this. It's not that they identify as women. They identify as winners. Yeah. If you watch and the footage. And it just wasn't happening for them. <laughs> Of these, oh, I mean, boy. it is, it's a joke. I mean, they were like 20 yards ahead of these other girls. I only get fired up about a couple things, right? There's it, only yeah. a couple things <laughs> really that make me super <laughs> mad. And denying science and biology is one of them. This just, has been Science with Jesse. Yeah, so, I mean, look, if you go to, uh, it's, it's in Connecticut, it, the, the, just watch this race. I mean, it is. And in the Olympics, too, wasn't this? It is two, when you look at this, it is two dudes against all girls where you're just like, I mean, they, they don't even make an attempt to look like girls. No. Like, not one. And I just don't understand so how, how you're cool with this. And again, this affects kids going forward. So let's say you have a shot at a sports scholarship, right? Pay for your education. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter where it is. You know, it's not like you have to go to a huge school like, you know, UConn or, or just for the sake of saying Connecticut here. Not like you're going to UConn, but there, there's plenty of great colleges where you can get a great education that have smaller sports programs that, you know, look, they're looking for winners of these tournaments all over the fucking country. Just trying to, trying to fill up these scholarships. So what are they going to do? Go to this race and say, oh, let's pick the girls that finished third and fourth. Because you can't have trans athletes in college. So why are we doing it in high school? Right. Um, th this, this has a major effect on girls trying to get scholarships. Because let's face it, it's not affecting the dudes. If a girl flips over to a girl's sport, or, or for a guy's sport, who fucking cares? You're going to get smoked. Yeah, like this. Any sport. Basketball. So this football track, thing. Football. What, you, what is going to happen to you, dude? You're a defensive player. I know. What the fuck is going to happen? So this girl has played for two years so far at a, at a JUCO school and then transferred this, this football player. I don't, I look, I haven't seen her play. I don't know all this shit. Nike just did a I commercial on her to for the Super Bowl, see I think. Her play. Yeah. I, like, I will tell you 100% because. Just of my limited knowledge mm -hmm. of science. Limited. She is not as good as a guy behind her in line. Right. I, I mean, there, there's, tell you there's no possible right way, now. especially and in football. The people tackling or not tackling, grabbing or not grabbing her, everyone loses. Right. If you tackle her, you lose. If you don't tackle her, you lose. If, if I'm a dude out there, like let's say I'm a wide receiver because that's. That's the one who she's going to be guarding or, guarding. or going against. Or, right. you know, stack the box and you're, you're going to have a handoff and she's got to get closer. I mean, alignment could absolutely truck her. Or a wide oh, receiver. Somebody like a Julio fucking, Jones yep. could fucking truck her. When you see these people, these, these football, like, just tackles or fucking slams, like, it is so violent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't... I, look, I understand... Her perspective of like, hey, she loves the game. She wants to play the sport. She's not, she's not allowed to play the sport. Cool. Start a female league. I mean, I don't know what to fucking tell you, dude. But yeah. I'm not here for you playing. Like, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. It, it, I'm not. I think it's stupid. So do I. And I think, it puts, I, I think it puts her at risk. And I think it puts the others at risk. Because if you're easing off of people, then that's when you can really get injured as a guy. I still say. Exactly. I still say like. You're good for a girl. Yeah. You're really good at this for a girl. I still say you're funny for a girl. For a girl, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just like, I still feel that. But then there's certain things that I would be like, you're pretty good at that for a guy, right? Yeah. Dishes. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying. I do. I do. And I've always said that we just have different sets of skills and when it comes to athletes right there is really no competition between a man no and a woman competition there isn't and when, there's when it comes no to, denying it now when it when it comes to other other forms of life of entertainment or you know fuck 
movies. Even running a company. Like, listen, I'm not going to say that a, a woman, like a hardcore yeah. woman boss can't fucking kill over a guy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in these physical competitions. Or fields. Like, uh, you know, fuck, man. F- fire, there's not a, do you know any female firefighters? But that's a physical thing. That's what I'm so saying. It's very physical. That's what I'm so saying. So I'm if, saying you're in, like, if you're in something very physical like yeah. that, I, I just have a hard time saying, hey, let's go ahead and give the women a chance. Like, why? It's going to drag down the rest of your team, your unit, whatever you're in. Um, it's there's, tough, there's man. There's just no way that they will be the best. Yeah. Ever. No, ever. Ever, You'll ever. be okay, but in everything else, you'll like, be like surprising. It'll be like a surprising, like oh dang. But but you, you're and, okay. And but to, that's it. To switch it, like for comedy, right? I'm a comedian. The best comedians right now are women. Are women. The I, best and I have writers. no problem saying that. I think that. Tina Fey. Yes, is, is kills Will Ferrell any fucking day writing. Yeah, and just in comedic anything. So I think that there's like, a bunch those, of fields that men are, are that women are better at than men. Even in Saturday Night Live, women have dominated dominated. Saturday Night Live. Yep. 100%. In the writer's room. All of these things. I mean, that's that's like one example. But I I, I just, I want to just be, I just want to be done with this. (laughs) You're not going to be. It's only going to get worse. I just want to be done with this thing of like. Because here's what's going to happen. We can take the place. But but like you take these, these track athletes that are switching from. Man to woman. I mean, that's a whole nother thing, but if, if, if you don't end that, they're going to end up eating up scholarships and taking away things and what, just because you're politically correct. Like that, that doesn't make any fucking sense for these people. I think there's a lot of people on both sides that are against that. It's hard to speak out against it, but I think liberal and, and Republican, let's just say those. Everybody two. should be because it's I just think biology. There's a lot of people. Yeah that are not okay with that. And then there's a small, louder portion of the, you know. Look, Bruce Jenner won the Olympics as Bruce, not as Caitlin. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Imagine if he switched, he would have won more. (laughs) Like if Caitlin goes, yeah. Would have won more. Would have won more. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. The other thing that's super crazy to me is uh, people flipping out over the notebook on uh netflix did you see this no it, i saw the flip out i don't give a shit in, in i the can't UK? believe we're even talking about i'll it. tell you why we're talking about it uh so they changed the ending over there of of the the Which end of the notebook they always go darker over there so it's weird that they actually changed the ending but go ahead it is and we're not going to say what it is for the audience in case you want to watch it um what that is because look people love that movie i remember the ending of that movie i love that movie i think it's great i think it's a great fucking movie uh, I, I think don't think the, it's the spoiler alert, alert to say the ending of the actual notebook. Eh, maybe. Is it? I'd, I'd <laughs> How for, does Citizen Kane end? I mean. I've, 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 I've for, I'll, I'll put it this way. I'd forgotten until it was on a few months back. I hadn't seen that movie in like, I don't know, five or six years, right? And then it came on again and I was like, oh, shit. Damn, that's right. That's how, that's how it ended. I, I forgot. If you haven't seen the notebook by now. You're not going to go check it out. And I think there should be a statue of limitations on spoiler alert. I think that's fucking bullshit. Then if tell, it's tell like, the audience how it ends. So they, well, if you know, you have to know how the movie. Right. But basically there's an all, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's yeah, yeah, yeah. storyline yep. with these two older people. Yeah. And it ends with them in bed. Holding hands. Holding hands dead. Dead. Yes. Yeah. And so there's another ending. And, and that's the last shot. People are that flipping They got out. together. They died together. They've been together their whole, you know. Here's why I care about this. cry and it's awesome. And- Here's why I care about this and I wanted to bring this up, right? Working on this 50K and a call girl script for Bollywood that's now done. Like that is gone and done and right. they're going into pre-production and, and it's great. My job is done with that, that, that thing. The last part of it was me turning over the script, like my original, my very, very, very first original. Now, all of these screenplays and all of these movies you've seen of mine or anybody else's go through a a million iterations and all of this shit, but they had asked for the original screenplay. Well, the original screenplay has a different ending. I don't, I believe you read that ending. 
or maybe you maybe yeah i think that was actually the first i don't i don't know I, by the time you got there i don't think it was you guys told me yeah i think At i think we told you told me and i was like why didn't we do that yeah one? exactly so but but we didn't we, we also didn't shoot it so we didn't shoot that ending right 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 um i debated in my mind of like which one to give them and i was like oh well fuck maybe i if i here's what i did do in the end i i gave them the original um and we shot no the original that i wrote why that so here here's why right so when they the, the time change is so drastic obviously we were using like sting's attorney so all this had to go through like london time right so they were eight hours ahead. Uh, I'd gotten, I think, their last email right when they went into the office. So it was probably like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, my time. And they said, hey, there's just one more thing that we want to complete this deal for the, the records. And, you know, uh, moving forward, we want the original. And I was like, all right. Well, I store, you know, everything on a drive that I've ever written of all time. Because, you know, you never know when it's going to, somebody's going to want it or it's going to come back up again. Case in point, this. Pulled it, pulled it up, and I had the original, the very first one, and I re- read, I read the ending, and I was like, "Fuck!" And then I had found the other draft, the one that we shot with, which is the shooting draft, and I decided to give them the original that they asked for, that was not the one that was shot, just in case they wanted to use that original ending, because I, that, that original ending of that film was the one that I wrote. And the one that I wanted the most to end that movie. And I still think to this day, I, w- I, wish, I wish it would have been that one. Yeah. Right? Um, financers and the director did not agree. Sure. Uh, one financer who was prominent in financing that movie was, was just like, this is, this is a graphic bad ending. And, and, right. and I think the audience is going to hate you for this. And I said, I don't think they will. Um, but you will never know if you don't shoot it, put it out and test it in the world with an independent film. You don't have that luxury. You can't to shoot extra scenes is expensive. You will go over budgets to test, to to take your movie out to different cities or test audiences or whatever. That is really expensive. Um, big studios can do that. You cannot do that with independent films. Uh, therefore we didn't, we didn't shoot it. I rewrote it. We shot what the ending actually was. Um, and even that ending didn't test that great. Like um, amongst like, I don't know, 15, 20 people or whatever, right? So we kind of reworked it and retooled it and got the ending that uh, uh, people felt satisfied with. Mm-hmm. I still wish it was the other one. When I look back at other films, like Get Out in particular, right? I voiced my displeasure over that ending for a while. Mm-hmm. And I really, really enjoyed that movie up until the ending. And then when I ended up working with, you know, one of the writers who worked on that movie and he's, he had said, Hey, your ending was the, actually the, that was the one mm. we, we wrote and shot and that, and it is shot with this Netflix deal and the notebook in particular, changing this ending. I would love more than anything to go back and watch get out with that ending. If they still have it. Right. I'm sure, I'm sure it exists somewhere. Right. So. With all of that being said, I think if there was other endings to movies that would shock us, I would like to see the alternate. They did it for a while on DVDs. Of like, do you know what the alternate ending is for the British one? Yes, I do. That's not at all what. What what? I mean, it's it's not like the same. It's like, not it's not the same. Saying, yeah. No 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 no. But 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 there is some. Little version, why ever, they, why ever they decided to shoot that scene, yeah, right, and include that scene at the end, that causes you to have a different feeling than the other scene that they ended on. I think the other scene they ended on is correct in the notebook. This new scene, meh, I don't really... I don't like being left with... I don't love an ending that's like, you figure it out. Exactly, I don't either. I hate that whatever so do you I. think. Yeah. So imagine not whatever if, I think don't make me write the ending for you. Imagine if some of these movies that left their endings up to eh, that's what you think. What if they had alternate endings where you're like, man, I'd really like to see that. And they they used to do it on DVDs for a while. And that's kind of how yeah. they would sell DVDs of like, oh, it's an alternate. See ending. the alternate endings. Yeah. Um, see deleted scenes. And I get no. sucked into that world mm-hmm. for a while when those movies came out. I was like, oh, fuck, I don't want to see these. 
Uh, th- then there was others that had like improv scenes that I was like, yeah, shit. I want to like, I remember Talladega Nights. I bought Talladega Nights on DVD. There was a million improv scenes on that where you were just like, yo, oh, really? amazing. Um, so yes, I, I would like to see some of these alternate endings for some of these things. I don't know why they did it over there. Yeah. Again, um, they usually go darker there. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I thought it was going to, when they said there was a different ending in the UK thing, I thought it was going to be even worse, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what did they, what did they Sharks. Sh- show them shitting themselves or something? <laughs> So they really just left it up to this is how you feel. The, there's birds flying away. Spoiler alert. Uh, I don't know why you'd watch the British version and not the fucking. That's US true. That, one, that's, but that's true, though, right? Like you, you when you die, you. Yes, everything you shit your comes pants. out. So snot from the nose. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, poop. P, anything that's in there. Basically, all the muscles that are holding things in. Right. No way. I never even thought about that for some reason. Because it's a really gross way to think about death. Like It is. Not only are you like, oh, my God, they're gone. Oh. Oh. What is Oh. oh. <laughs> no, I mean, really. <sighs> Yikes. I don't, and you still want to find a dead body after that. Older. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? F- not fresh. <laughs> yeah. God. I, I've switched it to, I want to like find like, oh my God, it's a skull. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't want to find a new, a fresh I don't want to find body. a fresh body. You don't want to find no. a freshie, if mm-mm, you will. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Um, and I want it to be, yeah, like old enough where it's like a cadaver like. Okay. If you will, which they don't have embalming. So it's not going to be like that, but. Yeah. An older body. Okay. Okay. I, it makes sense. Um, so, you know, speaking of dead bodies, that guy we talked about the other day, the murder on my mind guy, some more details about that case are, are coming out. Um, one of our listeners uh, sent me a documentary, a 20-minute documentary. This guy was about to be huge, and they did this 20-minute documentary on him and his friends and shit, and, like, the ones that he killed. Oh, my God. And it was really well done, like... All the, f- all if you go and look up this guy, um, this Y W N Melly, and he just goes by Melly. If you look up all of the footage on him, I mean, they were setting him up to be the next big superstar, and I mean, he was talking to kids and like going to his high school and middle school what and the lecturing fuck kids. Happened. He killed his own best friends, right? Well, here, here's so here's the the new details that have emerged. Okay, he tried to make it look like a drive by. Right. Um, and then ended up uh, his buddy. So it was the four of them in the car. Two of them got, he shot them and killed them. Um, the, the police have said that like the, the car itself was super grisly. We were just like, Jesus Christ. Uh, he gets out of the car at some point and leaves. Um, and the other buddy who was still alive drives these two to the hospital and says, hey, my friend just got murdered in a drive-by shooting. Mm-hmm. So this guy was driving around with, the, with his two dead best friends in the car for a while before they go to the hospital. Now they're trying to figure out why and when, but there is shell casings and all that shit. So the story obviously didn't match up. Now they're trying to tie him to this other uh, murder of a sheriff. So, I mean, this is going to get real bad, but uh, fuck, that's crazy. So I guess if you got shot and killed, that would be the same way. You'd go... Yeah. Oh, God yeah. damn it, man. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they said that, that that song helped. Helped find. Uh, yeah, yeah. About like they were on the fence, you know, of whether or not this guy could do some shit like this. And like, um, <laughs> you know, they said the song helped. Watching some other footage helped. Oh, God. And he had worked with Kanye. So he had just worked with Kanye. And um, yeah. So he was about to be the next oh. big big deal and like there's so much footage of this guy like again one of our listeners sent in uh this 20 minute doc on him i found some other you know fucking 10 five minute pieces that were i mean really well done where you were just like all right sweet this wasn't just like you know soundcloud rapper blew up and then boom this happens like 
he was destined to be the dude. And now, I mean, look, his song is still number one on iTunes right now. Today. And this is, he's, he's sat about a week on number one on the iTunes charts right now. So mm. it's, a, it's a creepy, weird sitch. But it, knowing that if you fucking piss and shit yourself, that's all over the car too. I kept thinking about that, James. Yeah. Um, you know? Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> try not to. I try not to because, you know, I do hear about and listen to murder stuff all day. Yeah, I'm surprised so you don't know to about. Think about what do I not know about all all of this? Like that, the, they don't explain that to you in all these murder shows. That you piss and shit yourself. Yeah, what it's really like, what it's really like to find a dead body or when somebody dies. I mean, the amount of murder you listen to, I really can't understand. Oh, I know what it's like. That's why I don't want to find. One. Got it. But like you listen to you listen to murder shows a good majority of your day. Sure. I, last and then, night to go to sleep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is why, because you, you say you didn't sleep well last night. Any, that is any not thoughts, why. Any thought that, hey, maybe we, we should back off at the murder right before bedtime. That is not why. It's not. Because you get scared, too, for scary movies. Yeah, I know, but if someone's there, then I'm fine. As, as much there. fun as you made of Bird Box, <laughs> you had nightmares about Bird Box that night and you couldn't go to sleep. So you're telling me. That the all of the murders the you listen box. to yeah. on these podcasts don't, that doesn't get to you or add up or any of that shit. Not if someone's, not if you're in the bed with me. <laughs> the bird box thing was like you were upstairs or you were, you were upstairs. Yeah. Because of like baby was, I was sleep training and stuff. Sure. And the thing about bird box, which I've said is just that moment of, someone being nice to get in the house and kill you. Okay. Right? Yeah. That guy, the like, the guy that holds the the famous, you know, meme, the guy that holds the old lady's eyes open. So that guy. Okay. Being so, or, or the, the element of that, sh- of that movie where the people be like, hey, it's okay. Right. Take your thing off just to kill you. Uh-huh. Because then I go into like real psychopaths that do that where they're like, you know, BTK being like, hey, I have I'm here to fix your blah, blah, blah and be super nice. And then like really nice about telling you to, you know, okay, get undressed and I'm going to tie you up and don't worry. And he would always tell them, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. And then he would always kill them. Sure. And that's your so that kind of like that is the scariest thing in the world to me. Someone like being so nice and tell and like just switching, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Using like this like soft tone to be like, I am gonna kill you, but it's gonna be okay, you know? Right. That kind of shit. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. I think part of it's you're, you're doing real, it to yourself, dude. James. I do. I do. You yeah. Know? Any other thoughts of just going so to sleep so, like are, Bourdain or so something? So when you're not there, I don't do that. So okay. when you're out of town, I don't listen to any of like Sword and Scale or any of the murder stuff at all. Really? Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. Oh, because I can, Smart. I cannot. Smart. If I hear any noise or like, remember we have those, the lights um, on a tree outside our window. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Christmas lights. And they're on a timer. So around midnight, they'll turn off. Right. And you weren't here one time, and it, I didn't really know that. And those lights turned off. And I thought, yep, that's it. That's what they would do. Yeah, they're coming they after would, you. They would cut the Christmas lights first. They'd leave other, every other light on, right? Yeah. Fully every other light, porch lights on, everything. They'd cut, they'd cut the Christmas <laughs> lights <laughs> and come in my door that way. And I just like got so convinced. I went and grabbed the kid. I had him sleep with me. I mean, it was serious business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I probably, I probably ease off of it. Um, by, by the way, breaking news, odd story. We were just talking about this. What about what, what you would do with original movies and shit? A Star Is Born. I'm just gonna read this right off of here. Uh, A Star Is Born is gonna return to theaters with new music in it and extended songs, and they're gonna do. Man, that's a lot of screens. Uh. 
1200 screens for one week starting March 1st. That's a lot of that's a that is a lot of fucking screens for that. It is. Do they really think it's going to be I would see it again. I would too. <laughs> I was, I mean, it, I was, was, saying it that, was my favorite movie of last year. Yeah. And during the Oscars, I was like, dude, I need to see this movie again. Cause I'm just sort of yeah. watching press about it, thinking about their, you know, what they're going to win, what they're not going to win. And I'm like, actually, I just want to see the movie. The, the soundtrack was great, by the way. So if you're going to, let's see, if you're going to add new music and extended songs and all that other shit, uh, fuck, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm down with it. It's kind of like the alternate endings, you know, you're just like, all right, sweet. Yeah. But my, there's another way that I feel about that kind of stuff or like watching deleted scenes or extended anything where I feel that a movie in definition is the director's cut of that movie from beginning to end. And I think that there's reasons why scenes are deleted. I think that there's reasons why songs aren't extended whatever sure so to me i don't love seeing like a different version alternate ending deleted scenes anything like that i just like to leave it i i picture i I, my idea of a movie is just a finished kind of right thing and that's it and it lives like that right um i don't i don't like it to be evolving and different and now it's this and now da da so there's two ways to think about that. Yeah, no. I, like, look, do I want to see longer songs? Um, well, so different he, music. So uh, here, here, I really here. liked it exactly how it was. So here's, here's what they're saying. It's going to be releasing. Uh, so total, there'll be 12 additional minutes of footage, including extended takes of songs and one entirely new song, not previously heard in the film or on the soundtrack. Uh, but it wasn't on there for a reason. That's what I believe. We'll find out. I, who knows? I, I think well, if this. If it was so amazing, it would have been in the movie. No. Uh, here, here's why, though. You can't have a movie that's too long. There's, there's a lot of shit you cut because of time, uh, of testing an audience's patience and ADHD, not diving for a phone. So, like, there is great. Look, there's a bunch of great shit that I've cut from films that I'm like, fuck, this is awesome, but it's too long. And once it's out, it's out. Then it's out of context to me. It is, but I think for the fans, and again, this, this will go back to the, the Netflix thing. Like, I think for the, the fans of whatever that film is, if you want to serve them up an alternate, you have a, an option to see it or an option not to see it. I'd be down to see this for sure. For sure. Uh, it says, as for Gaga, we get to hear an acapella version of Shallow. You already did hear that in the movie. Uh, this is a new one. It's already so, in the movie, but that's okay. I know, but this is a new version. Like, so I don't, I don't know how long she went. Because hmm. I think you only hear a couple, maybe a couple, three lines. You hear lines. the best lines, yeah. Yeah. You, are, you hear all the best part of that song, a cappella, in the movie. <laughs> There's no need to hear anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? You can give it a go. I don't James. think I'm here for it. I'm going to have to now say you can go all right. by yourself. Yeah, I'll go by myself. I want to see the original version, the movie that I loved. I thought it was perfect. If I wanted more, I would have said that. I'll, t- I'll take a, said, a You know a what? Can, I think this should have been longer. I'll take two cans of cupcake wine and, and go by myself. Have and just, a ball. Yeah. And just enjoy myself like a gentleman. Have fun. Canned wine, by the way, is... Whew. It's all the rage. Is it really? I, yeah, that metallic. I thought I found it on my own. No, it's not. I mean... It's six. So it, it, it's about five ninety nine a can. Mm-hmm. And it looks like a can of Budweiser, right? But it's mm-hmm. just it's just fucking wine. Mm-hmm. But wine is thirteen percent, right? I mean, two of those. Good night. Good to go. Yeah, for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like we're the Jetsons now. I feel like we've eclipsed everything the Jetsons were doing or thought oh, yeah. of or wanted to do. Oh, yeah. The flying car thing is always going to be out. That will never happen. No, too loud. Too loud. Elon Musk has already said, "Look, this is it's too loud." And plus, people be flying around, crashing into each other in the skies. There's no protection for that. Nor could you get insured for it. And I understand that. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the wine, though, is way, way more than we've the Jetsons it. ever envisioned. And we've done it now. We've done it. And I had it. Uh, I, bought, I bought a can just to, just to try it for the show of like, all right, what the fuck is this? What are we dealing with here on a 13% can of wine? I'm here to tell you it's real, kids. It is... 
it's 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 wine it doesn't taste any different now if you're looking for a good bottle of wine no you'll never be no. able to can uh, but cupcake is decent decent enough where you're like all right great i'm going to a concert it's quickly becoming the new barefoot is, go ahead oh oh well, is it really cupcake mm-hmm. well it's, I think it's better than barefoot. I hate a barefoot. A little bit, but yeah, it's, Barefoot's it's becoming awful. the new barefoot. I'll take, a, I'll take a, a cupcake over a barefoot easily. Okay. So the fact that they're doing that. Oh, yeah. Whew, girls on spring break? Good oh, man. luck. It We're is going to be uh, the Panama City this year is going to be off the chain. I mean, if that's what you're packing in coolers these days. Classy. Amazing. That's going to going to be a surgical summer out there. Man, you don't need a cork anymore. You just, you can just give a girl a can of wine at a party. Forget it. We used to have a little roofie in there. We used to have, well, James, now you're, you're taking it too far. I um, thought we were, oh, we were in the, <laughs> in the trust tree. Tre- I thought we were in the in tree the with the, the tr- trust. No. It's a circle. No, no, we're not. We're not. Um, but if you're. Find we, no roofies. We used to have Boone's Farm, farm parties. Mm-hmm. Um, those were two ninety nine for the ladies. Yeah, for the ladies, right? And then we would then Arbor Miss. We were Arbor Miss. Oh, were you really? We were just a couple summers. Like, yeah, we we're a couple you. summers apart. Yeah, but so the, you were Boone's Farm. We were Arbor Miss. The Arbor Miss was more expensive. I think that we went. The reason we oh, went. So we were just classier. I think so. Cool, cool, cool. Either way. Yeah. Younger and classier. Yeah, because Bo- Boone's I'll Farm still exists to this day. They both do. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. I know Arbor Mist does because I've seen it. I don't see Boone's Farm in stores that often. When I go to LA, I see it in, in the liquor stores there, where it's just like, oh, all right, dope. There's Boone's Farm everywhere. <laughs> you just want to make sure it's there. I, I do, yeah. You're yes. never going to buy it, but. You uh, never. I want that option, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want the option to Again, be like, all right, cool. I, I can get down to make on some sure Boone's. an Arbor Mist is around. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Still doing good. When we go to LA in a couple of weeks, We'll uh, we'll get some Boone's Farm and then we'll have you chug a bottle on the show. See what oh. happens. Could you still take down a bottle of Strawberry Hill? Um. Oh no! Really? Way too sweet. I use Arbor Mist for the sangria drink that I make, and Ar- I kind of had a little sweet. I th- yeah, Boone's Farm's a little, little drier. Same. I think it's same, a little drier. The Strawberry it's more Hill of a is brute. no. It is the exact same. And it's super sweet. And the more you get away from sweet drinks, the more those sweet drinks just. I'm a big fan of. Uh... So anyways, they give you an insane headache. Um, so I don't think yourself. I could do it. Could I chug? <laughs> would I or could I chug through a straw? Yeah. A good wine. Because that will get you super fucked up. Okay. But without that sugar headache, could I do it? Probably. Will I do it? No. 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 I'd, I've I'd, got shit to do. I'd take down a bottle of Boone's Farm easily. I'd, I'd go with Strawberry, oh I'd go with strawberry God, Hill dude. to start the night. <sighs> yeah. I remember bong- bonging one of them. Bonging? Yeah. <laughs> Beer bonging? Yeah. An entire <laughs> bottle of Boone's Farm just to start the day. Oh my god! Yeah, I forget. Just which... alone in your dorm? No, no. It was it was a spring break sitch where I was just like, ah, all right, we're kicking this off. Like, I know I just woken up. It was like eleven, and I needed it that day. It powered me through. Sure. Boone's Farm to me in college was the strike force of today, where I was just like, all right, oh, I just I need I this see. to get get the engines going. Right. Just to, uh, just a little. Yeah. I used to call a wake them up. You know, just a, just give me a nice wake them up. You know, mm-hmm. just a yeah, a nice bottle of BF. Gross. A little BF. Start the morning. Speaking of which, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day. And that goes out to Ernest and Julio Gallo. Oh, Julio. Yeah. The, uh, the winery. They started Boone's Farm. Really? Yeah. And they're the big, the gallon, no, right? I know. They're... That was another. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, when you are <laughs> low on cash. <laughs> there is, is that nothing the best like or what? A gigante bottle of. What I Ernest love now Gallo. is thinking about how much we just didn't consider good wine or 
what would you know what I'm saying? I think that's where that big gallon we would be like, guys, brought wine yeah. or two buck chuck or whatever. <laughs> just be like, well, pff, it's two dollars. <laughs> Not even thinking how horrible. <sighs> Oh, that's so true. That was. You just go like, you even thought like, you know, you were doing it. Yeah. No. You were the classy person that brought the wine, right? Yeah. Look, they, so they, it started Gallo. off. Yeah, Gallo started this off in 1961. Started off as an apple wine that was released. And then over the years, the company introduced numerous fruit flavored wines, obviously in malt beverages <laughs> under the Boone's Farm label, which I'm a gigantic fan of. Sure, um, sure, sure, sure. Big fan of. Of uh, the Boone's Farm, the the Ernest and Julio Gallo. I remember you're right. Like that was the go to when you didn't have any money. High school graduation, I bought like a big, big bottle of that. Uh, of the Gallo. Of the Gallo, right? And um, I put it in the trunk of my car. It ended up being a hundred degrees on graduation night. So we had like an hour from high school or two hours to get from the end of high school graduation to the graduation party it was a lock-in at this thing they didn't want kids out getting fucked up drinking and driving and all that shit smart and it was fun like it was at like this rec center and everything else sure. and we had a really great time so i'm not gonna i'm not knocking that whatsoever but we had a plan of we have two hours to get fucked up before this thing starts because we're going to be there to like the lock-in went to like six in the morning or something right mm-hmm. um and so i bought one of those gigante bottles of whatever I go out to the car because I, I graduate. I drive over to my buddy's house. We we're all going to meet up, you know, mm. and whatever we had bought to drink, we were going to pound it and then go together. Mm. I open up the trunk of the car. <laughs> it exploded. Like, <gasps> and I was like, oh, no. But it was it somehow managed to still stay in in the bottle itself, like the liquid. So I was just like, all right. Then how did it explode? What are you talking about? Fuck, like the cork. Oh, came off. Shot out of it, yeah. Um, out of this thing, and uh, I, I mean, it was cr- it was crazy, and that's how hot it was in there, in this fucking thing. And I was just like, "Well, fuck it. I guess what do we do now?" I drank this two hundred degree wine. Um, I try, I poured it over some. I tried to pour it over some ice and just get this down. I'll never forget the taste of it that <laughs> night. And that was uh, coming back up. Uh, that was one oh, of my final. Yes, it always comes. The gallo always comes back. You just up. and you the, the headache you get off of that is insane, and it doesn't matter what age you are. So that never goes. No, away. no. If I drank a glass of gallo right now, <laughs> yeah. I would instantly have a hangover <laughs> as soon as you're done drinking it. Oh, uh, and you're right. Like when you don't know, uh, like so. You know, you go to college, it was the Boone's Farm and all that shit, right? And then you move on to real life after college. And the first, I got invited, a friend of mine had moved to LA before me. And uh, she invited us to the, like this this nice, like, classy party in uh, Los Feliz. It was up in like Los Feliz. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was like, hey, bring some wine or some, you know, potluck or whatever to this thing. And we're just out of college. So we're like, fuck yeah, dude. And we didn't have any money out there. Sure. We brought one of those huge chairs. No, you didn't. We didn't know because we thought we we, we knew her in, from college, you know? It was so like, you're like, dude. She's cool. Yeah. She was, I think, a, a year older than us maybe or, or something, and she graduated earlier. Whatever the circumstance was, she was in L.A. before us. Mm-hmm. And she was there for a year. Right. She was already in the system of like, hey, this is yeah, what's classy. You, you definitely do. Not. Yeah. And you remember <laughs> that first time. <laughs> yes. Of like, Well, you're not classy and you're like, holy shit, shit I'm an asshole. That night, we brought a, a huge bottle of Ernest and Julio Gallo. And then the melon was, was the other thing. She had told us about this party like a week in advance. So we're gearing up like it's a college party. You know, like we're getting fucking crazy. This is awesome. And they sold, they sell golden grain in California. Mm-hmm. At LA liquor stores. Yeah. It's cheap as fuck too. So like Everclear? Yeah, 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 Everclear, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we used to do this thing where we carve a hole through a watermelon. And you stick the entire bottle into the watermelon, right? Yeah, children still do that. What do you mean? Still a high school thing, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah, a college yeah, thing, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, everybody used to do that in college, right. right? And you let it soak. You put it in the mm-hmm. freezer, and you let it really soak into that, oh, yeah. that melon. Oh, and yeah. We called it melanoma. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we carved it up. 
and served it at the party. And we just said, oh, hey, it's it's vodka, you know, infused watermelon slices. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, you know, walking in with a gallo, they were not impressed. I mean, they were just yeah really angry. Yeah. With the watermelon, though, they, they didn't really know. They didn't really know. They didn't really know what was happening. They thought it was so, so. People, well, some people who bit into it were like, oh my God, this is like, others were like, oh, maybe this is just like strong vodka or whatever. People were vomiting like the rest of the night. Like we never got invited back to a party like that. I bet not. People were really, really sick because look, look, let's face it. Unless you're just out of college or partying like that, like you don't really party like that anymore. And then these people Mm. certainly weren't partying like that. Sure. So they were not expecting the melanoma and it took down an entire party to where the point to where me and like my four buddies, like it was laughable to us where we were just like, oh my God. Because we knew walking in that it, this was not the place for us. Oh, you already knew that. We already knew where we, we got looks where it was just like, hey, we don't, you know, we're not dressed like anybody there or, you know, we look like we just showed up in town, which we did. Um, so they were not amused by our whole sitch whatsoever. Um, and then after the melanoma incident, like, the people were just going down left and right. And they knew it was from the watermelon, obviously. Oh my God. <laughs> and it was just, we got a phone call, I think maybe 48 hours later. It was just like, Hey guys. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that again at another party right. in LA or whatever. And blah, 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 blah. Little, not like, that I'm in, not that I'm inviting you ever again, but this is just for your own <laughs> good moving forward. <laughs> And I was like, fuck you. You, You're not my dad. You're not. This isn't my life. You're not my real dad. So we continued to do that for for a little while. I'd say that stretch went, you know, another good two, three years. But uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 But what it did help out was when I did have to go to like important people's houses, producers and all that other shit. You knew. I did. You chose not to for a lot of times. But if you did need to. If I I knew I didn't do it when I was Mm -hmm. just like, all right, rad. And then somebody else gave me the tip, a producer gave me a tip of like, hey man, if you don't have a lot of money, you know, you should always bring a a bottle of wine to somebody's dinner party or whatever. And if you don't have a lot of money, just get, get a a BV. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what's the, what's the thing with BV? And it's like a classy label. It goes from a, a, like a $9 version all the way up to like a hundred dollar version. And truthfully, people really don't know, you know? And I was like, oh fuck. All right, cool. So that was kind of my trick and my go-to. Love it. So anybody out there, if you're uh, just out of college and you're looking to go to a dinner party, you get invited, you got to bring a bottle of wine. If you don't have a lot of money, go BV. You can get a nice nine ninety nine er and people will think, ah, this, this could have been $50, $60. They'll never really know. Right. It's my, that's my magic and my knowledge that I'm, I give to you, world. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution of Boone's Farm Races for everyone at home this weekend. Good night. Good night.